Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how to create dynamic row heights in a table view. And here's an example of the app we're going to build. It just has a label up top and in this table you can see all the rows have the default height of 44, but this one is a little bit higher. And that's done automatically, I'm not actually telling it to be that height. It's doing it automatically uh, as the text wraps. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Alright, let's get started with a single view application. Click next and we'll have to give it a name, uh, we'll just call it dynamic row height and we're doing this in Swift so I'll just leave the language as Swift click next and I'll just save it on my desktop okay good so on the storyboard let's get started with putting our controls on there I'm going to change this to the 3.5 inch just because the screen is smaller and you can see the whole storyboard we know we're going to need a label at the top so let's stick that there and we'll need a table view okay let's put that control on there and I want to take these and I want to embed them in a uh, stack view so let's do that okay good now that we have that uh, let's go ahead and we want the stack view to fill the whole screen so let's do that Stack view is selected. Let's just go down here and give the margins of zero. Okay, good. And then we'll update the frames of the new constraints. So we should see it fill. All right, good. Now you see the table view isn't quite filling the, the whole row in the uh, stack view. So what we have to do is we have to come here to the stack view and want to change it to fill. There we go. Now it's filling the entire row in the stack view. All right, good. So let's start with the label. We'll just fix this up a little bit. Um, let's give this a height of 60. So let's come here, give it a height, uh, not a width, a height, and we'll make it 60. And we'll update that item. Okay, good. And then we want it centered. All right, that looks, that looks good, what we have. And we'll just call it dynamic row height. I'm gonna make it white, and I'll make the background a uh, different color. So let's see. Oops. Just give it like an existing color. There we go. Make the font a little bit bigger. All right, that's fine. Okay, now the UI looks good. Now let's get some content in our table. Let's go to the view controller. And we know for this uh, for this view controller, it's we need a uh, couple of classes to inherit from. We need the UI table view data source and we have to implement the UI table view delegate. Okay, good. And uh, of course, there's three required uh, functions that we have to implement uh, once we uh, use these. So let's get those implemented here. <clears throat> we know we need a uh, number of rows. rows in section and uh, we don't have any data set up yet um, so we're not quite sure what to return so let's just finish creating the other ones here we need a number of sections and for this we're just going to have one section so we'll just return one and then of course we need cell for row at index path okay good so let's get our data set up here. And I'll just call it table data. And it is going to be an array of strings. All right, first one, let's see what we had, uh, Rod. These are just my coworkers as well. 
and Mark, that's me. And then we have uh, Lem and Evans. Now we need one string that's longer than the others. So I think we added, we did that for Lem, had a longer string for him. Uh, and I said something like, uh, uh, he is from the Philippines. He's a Filipino. There we go. All right, so there's our data. And so now that we have our data, <coughs> we can return the number of rows. So we can just say return table data dot count. And for our row, we want to uh, DQ a row if it's available, a cell. So table view. DQ with identifier. And uh, you know, I didn't give the prototype, I think create a prototype cell and give it an identifier. We'll do that after. Okay, if I don't have a cell, then we'll have to create one. And it will be a UI table view cell. Style just be just default. <clears throat> and we want to give it cell identifier. Yeah, you know, now that I think about it, if we don't if I don't create a prototype cell uh, on the storyboard, then it should just create one here and it will give it the identifier right here. So that should be fine. Okay, now we want to uh, show the data in the cell. So let's do that. We're definitely going to have a cell. And it'll be on the text label. And it'll be on the text property. And it will be my table data. Get the data from there. And which one do we want? We want it for the index path. For the row that we're on. Okay, right, that should be it. Let's return that. Okay, and that should, no, you know, you know what we're missing? We're missing a reference to our table, uh, table view. So let's add that. Let's go back to our storyboard. And I'm just going to grab this and create an outlet for it. And we'll just call it table view. There we go. And let's go back to our code. Um, and I'm going to set the delegate and data source right in the code here. I know I can do this on the storyboard, but I'm just going to create it here just so you can see. Whoops. That should do it. Let's run it and see what we have so far. Oh, actually, let, I'm going to change it to a smaller phone just so we can see the wrapping more. Because probably on a 6 Plus, this probably won't wrap this longer text here. So I'm going to choose a smaller phone on purpose uh, just so we can we have a more narrow width. There we go. Okay, now you can see here, you can see that I spelled height wrong, <laughs> but you can also see that it's not wrapping and the, the height is, is staying at 44. So this is where we're gonna add some new code to make it wrap and make that height change depending on how much text there is. And there's really three things that you wanna add. And let's add that now. First, I'm going to go in here and change, uh, correct the spelling of height. There we go. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set a property on the table view and tell it that, uh, give it an estimated row height. 
And the default is 44, so we'll just stick with that. And then we want to tell it that the row height should automatically expand depending on the, uh, the dimensions of its content. So we want to say row height equals UI table view. Let's see, table view automatic. There it is right there. Okay. Now, if we run it, let's take a look at what it looks like with just those two properties set. Okay, it's still not working. That's because the label, by default, is only going to show one uh, line at a time. So we can set the number of lines on a label to, if we set it to zero, then it will use as many lines as, as it needs for the content of uh, the text. So let's change that. And we are going to do it here because we're, we, don't want to change, we want to change the number of lines on this text label that's in the cell. Text label uh, number of lines equals zero. And again, what that'll do is that will uh, remove yeah, I think it actually says it right here. Yeah. To remove any maximum limit and use as many lines as needed, set the value of this property to zero. And that's what we want. We want to use as many lines as it needs, depending on whatever the text content is. So now let's run it. There we go. Now you see it's using as many lines as it needs. And the, the height of the row is now dynamic. And that's just basically from three things that we did. We set the estimated row height to 44. We set the row height to UI table view automatic dimension. And then we removed the, uh, the single line for the label. We just set it to number of lines equals zero, which will give it as many lines as it needs depending on the, the content. So there you go.